So the, my project for the summer is the development and characterization of zinc phosphide films for solar cells. So for the first part of the summer, we've been focusing on creating the films themselves. And we do that by, we have sort of a vacuum system that's filled with a low pressure helium argon mixture. And we heat up some zinc phosphide powder and we hold a cooler piece of soda lime glass above it and sublimation occurs and put in the powder and we get a deposition on the surface. The deposition time and the film thickness are controlled by the pressure of the helium argon mixture in the chamber because we know that at around 580 Celsius the vapor pressure of zinc phosphide is approximately 100 torr. So when we get down to pressures below that deposition occurs and we can shut the deposition off very fast just by raising the pressure. And we have taken some pieces of the film and we subjected them to a bromine methanol, 3% roughly bromine solution, which edges the surface. That gives us, well, there's a couple reasons we do it. One, it removes any zinc oxide that may have formed in the surface since the deposition. And also allows the surface to reflect much more light because the surface is much more even, which allows us to do a lipsometry on these surfaces. And then we have taken some of these samples and we have also subjected them to hydrogen plasma treatments at 200 degrees Celsius for 5, 10, and 25 minutes we've had this so far. Our goal with that is, right now we currently think that there are some imperfections on the, the crystalline surface of the film that sort of scatter electrons that should be flowing through it, or holes in this case. So we're trying to fill those by getting uh, hydrogen to diffuse into the surface. And other groups have had sort of positive results by doing annealing instead, and we hope that hydrogen plasma will do basically the same thing, but far more efficiently. <clears throat> so once we make the films, we have to characterize them, and there are a couple different tools that we use to do this. The first is X-ray diffraction, and the results that we have in this so far indicate that when we have a cool substrate, we have a highly preferred surface orientation. This occurs because when the substrate is cool, there's less energy available to the zinc phosphide depositing on the surface, which means that they'll all be in the lowest energy crystal configuration. At higher temperatures, we get sort of a more random selection of orientations. We also have a Dectet probe machine, which is sort of a very simple concept. It is a probe that you drag across the surface of the, uh, the film. So we scratch the film and then we use that to test the depth. For the uh, films that I've made, the thickness is around four to five microns. And then we do Hall effect measurements on these before and after the plasma treatment, which I'll show you next. And we're also doing ellipsometry and uh, spectrophotometry. So, so far, the effects of the hydrogen and plasma that we have used, these are the Hall effect measurements. Does that, everybody knows roughly what the Hall effect is, right? Sort of. So the Hall effect the machine that we have gives us a lot of different electrical properties. So we can see that before and after the treatment, the resistivity goes way up, which is not what we are hoping for. And the mobility goes down. So we still have to work on sort of fine tuning the plasma treatments or possibly using other gases to determine uh, why this is happening. So we didn't expect it to happen. So for the remainder of the summer, one of the things we're going to do is create magnesium zinc phosphide shock induction in solar cells using thermal evaporation. We're going to compare these cells, or the efficiency of these cells made with and without plasma treated zinc phosphide films. We also want to take a look at the spectra of the hydrogen plasma during the treatment to see any gases that may be produced by chemical reactions between the hydrogen and film. And we may possibly use other gases, such as phosphine and time permits in the plasma treatments to see if these give us better results in hydrogen. Any questions? Phosphine is good and dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> in regard to the grain sizes. The grain sizes, it, it depends a lot on the temperature that you use. We did not actually measure those yet. At least I haven't. I know we've done some SEM work, but that was at the very beginning, and we haven't done any SEM work on the films that I've created. So I've done answer that. Yeah. So I think you said 400 C was a low temperature where you had uh, better uh, 
texture or whatever, you know, orientation of the crystals. Yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't think of 400 C as a very low temperature. Um, what happens if you go lower than 400 C? Well, that's sort of difficult to do with the equipment that we have. So basically what we have, uh, is there chalk in there? Yeah. Uh, sure. So inside the chamber we have sort of this setup where the top is a crucible that's made out of carbon and then we have about a 10 nanometer or 10 millimeter of spacing. And then we have the zinc phosphide powder down here. We have a set of lamps sort of along the bottom that heat up from underneath. And we don't really have anything to cool the top. We can make the top hotter, but it's difficult to cool it down. In fact, it's impossible. You'd have to have really good, I suppose we could do it if we had much better heaters that could deliver more power faster before we wound up with conduction and convection getting the temperature up here too high. But because we have such a highly preferred orientation, I mean, I don't think anything would be different. That has to be the lowest energy configuration of the crystals. At, at what, what's the high te highest temperature until we saw the, 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 you know, the poor structure? 650, oh, I think, right? Okay. I mean, this heats up to 650 down here. Oh, okay. So the, I think the highest that we did is 650. And then we also did a slow cool down on that one where we only decreased the temperature by half a degree Celsius. But that, that's actually sort of irrelevant because that just prevents uh, thermal cracking. We had shut the deposition off by raising the pressure before we did that. Oh. Any others? So do you have any thoughts, crazy thoughts, about why the hydrogen is working backwards to what you had hoped? No. <laughs> <laughs> you said crazy. I mean, we can see, if you go back, that at least on this film, it, it sort of depends. And I don't really trust, I mean, I only trust these measurements to the order of magnitude because the Hall effect machine is very old. And there are certain problems with it. like I've had a lot of problems with electrical contact, ha having good contact between the surface probes and the film. But we can see that the type of carrier goes from holes to electrons, and I think that might be we're just maybe putting too much in. But then again, when I did the untreated or the unetched a platinum treatment on the on edge surface, we wound up with the carrier being holes instead of electrons. So that's kind of weird. All right. Well, let's thank Andrew again.